Hello, everyone. This is another supplemental video to our bisphenol 3 lecture 3 and our discussion on glycolysis. And what I want to highlight for you in this short video is the concept of high energy compounds and why they're important to our discussions on metabolism really throughout the quarter. So what are high energy compounds? The definition is of a high energy compound that upon its hydrolysis, meaning upon using water to break a single bond, that this hydrolysis reaction would release a large negative delta G zero prime, so a free Gibbs energy of equal or less to minus 25 kilojoule per mole. So this is somewhat arbitrarily where the line has been drawn. That level of energy release is required for it to be a high energy compound. And the energy that is released through these reactions can be used to do biochemical work, meaning, for example, facilitating other reactions that in themselves are not thermodynamically favorable. So similar to what we will discuss um, in combining other reactions, for example, with the hydrolysis of ATP. So what I want to do is just to introduce you to some of the key high energy compounds many of which we will actually be encountering throughout the quarter. So the first one up here is phosphate esters. Note here, these, the hydrolysis of a phosphate ester is exergonic, but they're actually not considered high energy because they're not releasing enough energy to make this bar of minus 25 kilojoule per mole. But we have encountered phosphate esters before Right. In another video where I talk about the importance of ATP as part of our glycolysis session here, we had seen that a phosphate ester is actually part of the ATP molecule. So the, co the connection actually between the ribose and the first phosphoryl group. So you can imagine you would have right, the part of the ATP molecule here. Then we have our oxygen here, a sterified. So here's your ester to a phosphoryl group. So we have a phosphate ester. Again, it's exergonic, but not a high energy compound. Keep that in mind. What is a high energy compound are acyl phosphates, right? So these are now phosphate groups that are bound to an acyl group. What's an acyl group? So broadly speaking, an acyl group would be a functional group that contains a double bonded oxygen to another rest, which should be an alkyl group. What does that mean, right? If you look up here, we have our double bonded oxygen bound to an alkyl group here. This can be any kind of rest now, any kind of other molecule, and is sterified to your phosphoryl group, an acyl phosphate. And acyl phosphates are high energy compound. One of the examples we'll see today in glycolysis is 1,3-BIS-PJ, a very important intermediate in making ATP through glycolysis. Next one up, enolic phosphates. Also, these we will actually see as high energy compounds in glycolysis. What's an enolic phosphate? We have to look at what an enol is. So an enol would be an alkene function such as here, right, that has an OH group. So you would have an OH group here, and then you have it esterified to a phosphoryl group. Right? So if it's only the alkene and the hydroxyl group, it would be an enol. If it's a sterified to a phosphor phosphoryl group, you have an enolic phosphate. These are high energy compounds. And probably the most prominent example we'll see this quarter is phosphoenol pyruvate or PAP. Okay? That's one you want to remember. Right? Next one is creatine phosphate. That's a very specific one and we'll actually briefly touch on it this quarter. Also a high energy compound. We have, have, don't have to go too deep into its structure here for our purposes. One of the most important ones, again, this might ring a bell if you already have watched our video on ATP and its relevance is phosphoanhydrides. What are those? These are now chemical bonds between two phosphoryl groups. So we have two phosphoryl groups, one here and one here. They're esterified, so one of the oxygens of the phosphoryl group, this makes for a phosphoanhydride. And these are actually very high in energy, very clearly high energy phosphates. And we will see those specifically throughout the quarter 
in all our discussions on ATP and ADP. Okay. Last but not least, thioesters. We won't see them too much this quarter, but I want to include them here for completeness. These are carboxylic groups that are serified through a thiol. So you have your thiol function here, right? There's a sulfuryl group. The general formula is this one here. Again, I include them here for completeness, but one of the really um, important metabolites that we will see this quarter that falls into the thioester group is acetyl-CoA, one of the really key intermediates throughout our energy metabolism. So this sort of compiles the list of important high energy compounds that I want you to be aware of for our um, upcoming discussions throughout metabolism. I don't ask you to be able to draw them. You should be able to recognize these functional groups. So feel free to refer back to this video if you want to sort of revisit some of these functional groups and how they relate to high energy compounds. All right. <clears throat>